How is it going to run through with my New Japan Pro Wrestling Super J Cup 2019 Day 2 in San Francisco review? Of course, you guys do not know. I did attend this show live back at the end of August. I do have a live experience and review video up for that. If you guys want to go ahead and check that out before that, feel free to do so. But this video will be about the streaming version of it, the version on New Japan World. And without wasting more time, I'm going to jump right into the video with, first off, kind of not really complaints, but two things that are kind of irritating about the production of the show. Um, for this day, for some reason, this uh, show only has one camera angle. It's only the hard camera throughout the entire show. There's no different camera angles. Even though you can see people around ringside filming the show, you only get one camera angle throughout the entire show. So after a few matches, you get used to it. But, you know, once towards the end of the show where some of the matches are going to the outside, it gets kind of annoying because you're not seeing what's going on because it's only focused on the ring, not on the outside. So you do miss some stuff. But like I said, you do get used to it after a few matches. And secondly, the commentary uh, for this show was very, very bad. You know, Kevin Kelly, I love him, but his commentary this came off so scripted it didn't seem like he was genuine or like really calling it it was just kind of reading off of what he was told to do so for that reason commentary is pretty bad and commentary is only on for the tournament matches of the show um, because when the show first got originally got released they only released the tournament matches so only the second half of the show have commentary uh, but later on they end up adding the non-tournament matches so they end up releasing the full show I think like a week or two ago on New Japan World so you know the first five matches don't have commentary the non-tournament matches don't but the tournament matches do but like I said commentary form which is very bad like I said love Kevin Kelly but it just comes off so fake and scripted it just I don't know it, it doesn't sound good at all if you ask me but yeah, those are kind of two complaints about it in terms of production. But the actual show itself, it was just as fun as I thought, you know, watching it back as I had being there live. The show flew by live, and I felt watching this, uh, the show flew by as well. I know some of the matches were kind of shorter, but uh, the length of the show is probably like two and a half hours. It's I don't really know the, the full runtime because on New Japan World, they have it in the matches. They don't have the show full in one sitting. You have, to, you have to watch match by match by match. So um, I'd, if I had to guess around the full total runtime, I'd probably say two and a half hours around there. But yeah, very easy show to sit through. You know, it's not uh, a musty show by any means, but I feel like every show was on that good um, level. You know, in the main event, that was tremendous. So really, there's only one match to see on the show. It's the main event. Besides that, you can easily skip this show. It is a skippable show. Like I said, it's, you know, every match is pretty much good, but nothing really out of way to see besides the main event. So I don't know, I had fun with it, I still had a good time, and uh, you know, the reason why I wanted to watch this show is because I actually will be attending uh, Super Showdown in San Jose tomorrow on the 9th, so uh, that was the reason why I, watched, I wanted to watch the show too, to get me amped to, uh, you know, be there tomorrow for it, so... Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I've wasted enough time, three minutes in, I haven't even talked about the actual show yet, but of course, the opening match we had was uh, Jonathan Grisham taking on uh, Alex Kotlin. This was a good opening match here, not really much to it, you know, Kotlin was very big uh, compared to Grisham, because, you know, he's a short dude, and uh, so Kotlin pretty much worked over him, threw him around like it was nothing, a lot of grappling in this match as well. Uh, Grisham ended up working on the leg of Kotlin to kind of uh, bring him down to size and then there's a bunch of cradles of um, small packages which led to um, uh, Jonathan Grissom getting the one two three over Alex Kotlin and to get the win so Jonathan Grissom gets the win like I said good opening match short but like the story to it, like the, the, you know, the grappling, you know, and I like, you know, Grisham working on his left leg to kind of cut him down to size. So good stuff to start the show. Then we go to Robbie Eagles taking on Clark Connors. This match is kind of similar to the, uh, the opening match where it's kind of that same level of good where it was a good part portion of action, but you know, not enough to make it like a really good match or whatever. Uh, some good back and forth stuff, you know, Clark Connors really showed an aggressive side and really started beating down Robbie Eagles once he got pissed off and gave him a huge drop kick and pretty much cut him down to size. But then Robbie Eagles, had his comeback um was able to hit a um uh went for a moonsault but missed the moonsault Clark Arnold got out of the way uh, after he hit a swanton missed the moonsault then Clark Arnold took control of it and then Robbie Eagles ended up working on his leg a little bit locked in his submission and then Clark Connors ended up submitting so Robbie Eagles has a win good match you know um pretty much on the same tier as the opening match if I thought so it was what it was uh Bushi taking on uh Shota of course John Mox his little protege he had it for a little bit in New Japan for wrestling uh he was over just the fact that he has you know the John Mox association but this match was fine you know Bushi's one of those guys kind of like Naito I said in my live review where if he doesn't have to really try he doesn't really try I mean you can definitely tell here is kind of run the motions he laid some chops in you know he let Shota get him you know get his stuff in to make him shine as well when he did too but besides that really basic you know little match here uh bushi got the win after he hit the code breaker off the second rope onto shoda uh for the one two three so bushi wins in a 
pretty quick match. Not really much to it. Like I said, you know, he kind of beat down Shota. Shota got his stuff in for a little bit. And then, of course, you know, Bushi ended up getting the win at the end. So, not really much to it besides that. And then, of course, we had a tag team match, of course, with Taiji Ishimori team up with Gato taking on the team of Carl Fredericks and Ren uh, Narita, or whatever his last name. I apologize. This match was fine as well. It was mainly uh, Ishimori in the ring, you know, with uh, with uh, with uh, Carl Fredericks. And then, of course, Gato got in the ring. Carl Fredericks had a really nice um, you know, hot tag where he had a beautiful drop kick and was beating on Gato for a good while. Um, double submissions in the ring with Ren and Carl where they both had, um, I believe Ren had Ishimori in like a Boston Crab and I think uh, Fredericks had Gato in a half or a single leg Boston Crab, and then of course the submissions got broken up. Uh, Ishimori ended up getting the upper hand. They took out Fredericks and then worked on Ren, and then you know Ishimori ended up locking in a cross face, and then Ren taps out. So Ishimori and Gato get the victory. Fine match for what it was. Carl Fredericks had a nice hot tag, but besides that, nothing really to it. And then of course we had Juice and Thunder Liger teaming up with Amazing Red to take on Rocky Romero and Yo. Uh, live this match was a lot better. I thought this match was a lot of fun live, and it was fun watching it back here, but. You know, it just wasn't as good as a live perspective, if you ask me. Rocky Romero had some good interactions with Liger and Red, you know, doing some comedy stuff, but, you know, being serious. You know, Rocky Romero is one of those guys where he can be funny and entertaining, but once he's serious and really wants to go, he can have a really good match. And, you know, I feel like we, I wish we'd get more of a serious Rocky Romero, but it was fun here. You know, Liger really wasn't the match the majority of the time. Um, Amazing Red had a really good exchange with um with yo and yo i know we're playing 3k i'm not a huge fan of them but you know as singles i think they definitely have potential especially show he definitely improved in the main event with will osprey but yo here did a pretty good job with um with liger and amazing red amazing red ended up getting the victory for his team after he had code red onto yo was it or was it rocky i don't remember uh who he ended up pinning but uh amazing red ended up getting the victory for him and liger you know it was a good match probably the best match um of the first half of the show honestly was this one it was fun. The crowds didn't do it. Liger is most over person in on the entire show, obviously. So, yeah, just a fun match and definitely was a fr uh, fun first half. And then from there, of course, we go to the uh, quarterfinals of the Super J Cup tournament. Of course, the first match kicking off the quarterfinals was uh, Cristico taking on Sabrano Jr. Uh, this was fine. It was. It was a good match, you know. It was a good opening match for the tournament for tonight. Uh, you basically, you're basically Lucha Libre stuff. A lot of uh, springboards, and this is where you kind of get confused, where it starts going to the outside and start missing stuff. Um, you know, it was short though. It was only like six or seven minutes. Not a very long match by any means. But I feel like the the little time period they got, uh, they got some good stuff in, and then of course Crisco and winning to advance the semifinals after Sombrano Jr. went to the top rope. Um, Crisco got up, ran up, hit a. Um, a Spanish flyer from the top rope and one, two, three, end up pinning him to advance to the semifinals. So that definitely was a good match to start off the tournament. And then of course we go to um, El Fantasmo taking on TJP. This match started off very good and it kind of progressed, but then it kind of slowed down. And I feel like when it started progressing again to a really good match, the finish just kind of came out of nowhere and it was flat. So I don't know. It was a very inconsistent match. I thought, you know, there's some comedy stuff at the beginning with TJP, like, you know, dabbing. Then, of course, you know, ELP, you know, kind of mimicking him, like dabbing on the ropes and whatnot. And just some comedy stuff. Then it started breaking down to more of a technical match. And then uh, once the pacing started kicking up, you know, it started getting good. Uh, it kind of was going from second gear to third gear. And then the match kind of came to a finish where El Fantasmo uh, distracted the ref or the referee got distracted or whatever happened with the ref. Uh, Alpha Latasma ended up, you know, raking the eyes of TJP, rolled him up with Schoolboy, one, two, three. So, uh, pretty flat and shit finish, but like I said, the match was going pretty good, but just was not able to pick up, and it kind of ended when it started picking up again, so... You know, that was that was good. And then we go to Dragon Lee taking on Taguchi. This was a really good match here as well, I thought. You know, the best match on the show up to this point. Um, just, you know, Taguchi, same as Rocky Romero, you know, he can be very entertaining and funny, but if he's very serious and really wants to have a really good match, he can go out there and tear the house down and have a great match, and that's what kind of, what him and Dragon Lee were doing. Um, some comedy stuff, you know, like, you know, Taguchi running the ropes and Dragon Lee watching him, and then it got serious, uh, you know, Taguchi went to the outside, uh, Dragon Lee was really laying his shit in, and Taguchi was as well, Taguchi had a really nice comeback, but then the match kind of, you know, slowed down a little bit, it started becoming more of a, you know, grappling match, and then I feel like right before you know kicked in the fourth gear the, i'd say they're in third gear and before them with the fourth gear the, the match kind of just ended just out of nowhere um uh, dragon lee just hit a running knee on Gucci and pinned him one two three so the finish really was out of nowhere i feel like the match really started picking up again then it you know just kind of came to an end but it was still really good 
no complaints, both men look really well, but like I said, just as soon as the match really started picking up again, uh, to the point where I'm think, thinking like, okay, now we're really cooking, the match just, just came to an end, so, you know, that's kind of my only complaint, but like I said, still a really good match at that point, and then we go to the tremendous main event, the only reason really to watch this show with a fantastic match to close it out, Will Ospreay taking on show live, this match was incredible, and watching back, it lives up to it, because this match was a hell of a lot of fun, these two went out there and beat the holy fuck out of each other and told a great story, show, this definitely was a breakout performance for him, he definitely looked like a million bucks against Ospreay, and uh, I could definitely see him, you know, contending for, you know, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, or just being a singles champion at some point in his career in New Japan, he definitely showed, um, what he can do with Osprey, and they told a great story. The crowd was solely getting behind Show. Show was laying his stuff in. And Osprey would kick him really hard in the face, and then Show would pretty much Hulk up. Crowd got really up behind him and started beating the shit out of Osprey. Worked on Osprey's arm for a little bit, so Os Osprey had trouble locking in. Uh, the Stormbreaker, a tremendous storytelling from both men, and just you know, as the the, the time got higher, you know, the people were really starting to question who was gonna win, and uh, just. Yeah, they just went out there and had a tremendous main event. A lot of stuff was out to the outside as well. So there is some portions of the match where you didn't get to see because it was on the outside. You just kind of heard the reactions of the crowd. And then all of a sudden, like, you'll see Osprey fly in the corner, you know, hitting a drop kick in the show into the barricade out of nowhere. But, um, yeah, just tremendous stuff. Osprey just beat the shit out of him towards the end, hit an os cutter, and fought it up with the Stormbreaker for the 1 2 3. And Osprey, of course, wins to advance to the semifinals of the Super J Cup tournament. Uh, obviously, you know, if you guys are no spoiler alert, um, Elf. Taz went up winning the tournament and up challenging Will Ospreay at King of Pro Wrestling unsuccessfully. So Will Ospreay is still the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. But yes, El Fantasmo did end up winning the tournament, um, which I did not agree with. I think he just, I don't know. I didn't agree with him winning it. It should have been someone else, but whatever. El Fantasmo winning it. Uh, still, like I said, I thought it was a very fun show. You know, it's not a great must-see show by any means, but if you want to sit back and watch two and a half hours of fun wrestling, definitely watch this, and you end up uh, having a tremendous main event to close the show as well. So, overall, like I said, the Super J Cup 2019 Day 2 in San Francisco was a very fun show. Um, you know, it was just good. It wasn't a great show by any means, but if I had a tremendous main event, this show definitely got me more excited to be at uh, Super Showdown, or not Super Showdown, Showdown in uh, San Jose tomorrow night. I'm very excited for that show like i said i want to watch the show to kind of get me hyped up for that show and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video like i said in the beginning of it if you guys want to go ahead and check out my live review you know like seeing the merch i got and you know getting my live perspective of it go feel free to check that video guys out and of course on my live review and experience for uh new japan showdown in san jose i'll see you guys and thank you guys for watching the video